What's up guys and welcome back to Fancy Goldfish Fanatics. Today I'm going to be telling you a little bit more about my background. Now I haven't actually really spoken about what I do or how I have become knowledgeable about fish so I thought in today's video we'd talk over a little bit about it where I started my fish keeping journey all the way up to where I am now slightly different video maybe some of you won't really like this kind of video but I thought it was quite important for me to share my background and as I am a fish keeping channel and especially a fancy goldfish keeping channel I thought it would be good to show what background knowledge I actually have and then you can sort of make your mind up whether the knowledge that I provide to you guys at home is valuable or correct and you can sort of make your own judgment there. So heading all the way back to 2012 was when I first started fish keeping. Now I am 25 years old and I've been keeping fish for just over a decade. I think I started when I was around 14 years old. Now it all started when my dad had a big koi pond in the garden. Well when I say big it was actually huge to me because I was obviously very small and it held around 9,000 litres of water. Now this pond you may recognize if you've watched all the way back to my first ever videos. Now I actually did a video on YouTube I think it was probably about nine years ago now and I actually showed the sort of transformation of that pond. Obviously very very bad graphics and if you do want to check out that video if you go onto my old videos playlist you can actually see some of my old tanks and also old ponds as well and sort of old projects that I kept way 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 back but this koi pond was a beautiful rubber liner pond it had green water and about 200 goldfish in it it had you had no filtration on it you could hardly see the fish the fish would only come up to feed there was no aeration no filtration no water movement i have no idea how these fish survived there was a massive pond lily in the middle and it was absolutely huge the roots were like this sort of size and it had loads of these goldfish in it so the water was really really green and i really really started to look at koi online and i really really liked koi carp and really wanted to keep them my parents said no you can't keep them and i kept persisting kept persisting and they said if you want to resurrect the pond you need to do it yourself and pay for everything so when i was about 14, 15, I started earning a little bit of money doing a few jobs here and there for people and I started to collect some cash together and I actually purchased a koi filter online on eBay. Now this was, I think it was around £150, something like that, so not too much money for an absolutely huge filter but back then it was a lot of money to me. Managed to get an old pump out of the shed and rig it all up and get the pond back into its functioning state cleared it all out, drained the whole thing, cleaned it all out, and then I could start adding some fish. Now I'm gonna try my best to find some pictures to put on the screen of that pond and of those fish, and you may see me <laughs> looking a lot, lot younger than I am today. And I actually purchased quite a few small fish. I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea about quality. I remember calling up a local koi dealer and asking what their cheapest fish were, and they said 35 pounds, and I <laughs> vividly remember that phone call and how shocked I was. I was like, 35 pounds for a fish is a ridiculous amount of money. I want something really cheap, like five pounds, so I could get quite a few fish for my budget. Now, obviously, today, keeping the high quality fancy goldfish, I can understand why fish have certain price tags. But going back onto the pond, I added some fish. I then started to get a few problems with them because I was obviously adding fish from different sources. And I actually had that local koi dealer come over and he did a parasite inspection and he did actually get his microscope, check the mucus, and it really, really intrigued me. I had no idea about this. We just purchased a general pond treatment, added it to the pond, and it hadn't done anything to the fish. The pond went super blue and it just basically had no effect on the fish. So then he took a sample of the mucus under the microscope and had a look at it. We identified that it was flukes and then we treated the pond for flukes with a proper koi treatment. And this is what really got me interested in to the fish and I realized how much there was involved. Now I'm not gonna dwell on every single product project but I will go through them slowly. Next, I then built my own koi pond. This is when I was 16 to 17 years old. It took me nearly a year to build and I purchased all of the materials for this pond. 
I think from memory this pump cost me around two and a half thousand pounds. So at 16 or 17 years old, it was a lot of money, but I'd obviously been saving for the full year and I'd been working part time at the weekends to save up to do this pond. I remember getting all of those big concrete blocks, taking them all the way around the side of the house, getting the concrete pumped into wheelbarrows at the front of the house, taking them around the side and making that concrete base and then fiberglassing the whole thing myself. Big shout out to my dad. Thank you so much because he helped massively with that pond. I've never, I had never ever done fiberglassing, brickwork, mortar work, pipe gluing, anything like that. And I learned everything off of YouTube like potentially some of you guys are watching today. And I actually just learned everything off of YouTube. So we laid all the blocks. Dad helped me tremendously. It told me what I potentially should or shouldn't do. Bearing in mind, he's not a builder either. He actually works in IT. So it was a big, big learning curve for both of us. But the final result was an absolutely amazing 3,000 gallon koi pond. We built a big window into the front of it and I put a bead filter and a sieve filter on it as well. And I had quite a few fish. I think I had around 10 or 12 fish up to 82 centimeters or 85 centimeters was the biggest koi I actually had in that pond. Then I started to go off to university and this was actually where I started to study aquaculture and fisheries management. So I do have a Bachelor of Science degree with on in a fish related degree so essentially I went to uni for three years and studied a fish science fish husbandry fisheries kind of degree looking after fish learning all about them the culture techniques the system creation circulation of systems filtration business everything about that i learned at uni and throughout the second year i actually decided to sell the koi because it was too much for me to come back every single weekend to clean the filters and look after them so i ended up selling all of those fish but i really really still loved koi and this is where fancy goldfish started to come into my hobby now i did have tanks inside i did have marine tanks and tropical tanks as well but this is where fancy goldfish played a massive part in my fish keeping journey because I knew I couldn't have a massive koi pond because I couldn't look after it whilst I was at uni and I wanted something a little bit smaller and more manageable and this is where I actually started to get into fancy goldfish. Now first of all I purchased a few ranchu and kept them in an outside pond. Now I had a big IBC tank, I'll put a picture up on the screen of one of those, and this was a thousand liters that I'd previously grown some koi fry in, and now what I decided to do was chop it down into a third, build a wooden decking sort of around it, build this sort of frame out of wooden decking, and actually the fish stayed in this, built a little polycarbonate cover for them, and they did really well. I had loads of Amazon frog bit that grew on the surface, covered the surface, and I had a big internal fish filter that I sort of pimped, added some alpha grog into it and some sponges as well. Then I decided to keep them indoors into a tank and then I ended up selling those fish. Then after I finished uni, I got back into the fancy goldfish and I started a, another ranchu tank. This is where I bought a few small fish of a breeder. Then I decided to sell them and I realized that I couldn't sell these fancy goldfish anywhere. I realized all of the Facebook groups wouldn't let me sell their these fish. I couldn't really sell them on eBay because there was no one to sort of, I couldn't find anyone to buy them. And what I decided to do was actually start the my own Facebook group. And this is where Fancy Goldfish Fanatics was actually born. So Fancy Goldfish Fanatics was actually born because I wanted to sell a few of my ranchu and I couldn't find anywhere to do it. So I started the group, got a few members. It started slowly snowballing and rolling. Then obviously I got a community violation on Facebook because you're not allowed to sell live animals on Facebook. And this is why I then decided can't do that anymore, cannot sell these fish on Facebook anymore, unfortunately. But then the group decided to keep snowballing and just kept growing massively. We had a few businesses interested in it as well. And it basically just grew and grew and grew. And I believe it has around 80,000 members at the time of recording this video. And it is so close to becoming the biggest fancy goldfish community of hobbyists in the entire world, which I cannot believe 
I think it's been about three years since the group was set up. Now, there is one more group ahead of us, I believe, or one community, which is an Asian group, but we are definitely the biggest English speaking group in the entire world, which is absolutely amazing. So now as the Fancy Goldfish Fanatics brand grew, obviously along the way, I've kept multiple different fish. I do have a fighter tank. I or a better tank i also have the top view japanese ranch outside and i also have the fancy goldfish indoors the oranda mega tank as well and along the way i've kept so many different species i've kept malawi cichlids i've kept stingrays i've kept arowana i've kept ryukin in a tank that was literally where i am sitting now i had a big 750 liter tank with some monster fishing over there i've kept four different marine tanks this was a marine tank i kept a marine cube and nano as well and i've kept a huge amount of fish and over that decade of fish keeping i've been on many forums and my day-to-day -day life is all about fish and now at this moment i have actually just started my own business so hopefully i've outlined everything about my career in the fish hobby obviously i've missed some actually huge steps but basically i've been fish keeping for over a decade i learn about these fish day in day out not just fancy goldfish but fish in general i've worked for three different fish companies i've worked for a lfs or a local fish store i've worked for a koi dealer as well and i also work with some other businesses with fancy goldfish and a few other businesses that wholesale fish and also sell fish to the public as well but this is where i've actually started my own business and around three months ago i actually started aquatic elements which is my own company i install and maintain ponds and aquariums all over sort of southern south of london area and this is my sort of area and expertise and i've actually been doing that for around three months now and the business is growing like crazy i could not be happier but i'm not going to go into too much detail on my business but this is sort of where i'm up to now so that is my whole fish keeping journey my life is about fish as from the moment i wake up to the moment i go to sleep my entire day is involving keeping fish looking after fish collecting information etc etc so hopefully this video has been quite interesting and i've sort of shown the process of me going through from the koi hobby through obviously the aquarium hobby into fancy goldfish and i think i've been keeping fancy goldfish now for around six years so i haven't kept fancy goldfish for those total number of years but i actually started my fish keeping hobby a few years before i mentioned but i wasn't too interested in them and they were actually fancy goldfish i remember having a black moor in a tank inside and that was before i started the koi pond but i wasn't too interested in the fish then that was sort of my parents setting that up for me but that is really my fish keeping experience, my fish keeping journey. So I do have a degree and I'm not just making up information. I do have quite a knowledge and wealth of information in my head that I love to share with you guys at home. And I absolutely love it when you guys comment, like the videos as well, and you sort of have a little debate with me, have some input. As always, there is no one single way to keep a fish tank. There are many different ways and many different hobbyists have different ways in keeping their fish in successful thriving environments so if you do have any questions about my fish keeping hobby then leave a few comments down below obviously in about two weeks i think we have the gsgb event where i am going to be doing a talk i really really hope to see a lot of you there obviously if i do meet you there i will have no idea who you are so please introduce yourself and obviously you know my name is chris but i have no idea what your name is so please introduce yourself and let me know you are a viewer of the channel and i really cannot wait to meet loads of you guys there i'm obviously quite nervous about doing the big talk in front of everyone but hopefully it's a massive success i'm really looking forward to seeing some amazing fish in the fish show also seeing what fish are for sale from star fisheries and basically meeting the whole goldfish community in person so that is it for today's video as always if you do have any questions leave those down below thank you all for watching remember to keep those water changes up and happy fish keeping